Katy Perry was revered in the late 2000s for innovating pop music. She had the catchiest hooks, didn't take herself too seriously, campy outfits, conceptual music videos. She dominated. And now it just feels like she's trying to stay relevant by reverting to this basic sounding pop. And I mean, just look at the album. The samples are from like 20, 30 years ago. It's like very Euro pop. It doesn't get more basic than that. I'm sorry. And it's not just my opinion. Uh, it just makes me really sad. But also, it's karma because she worked with Dr. Luke. You shouldn't have done that, girl. Like, uh, my, my Mitleid hält sich in Grenzen, we would say in Germany, which means my pity has its limits. <laughs> Sorry. Katy Perry's new album, 143. Yes, it's a little joyless. It doesn't contain the killer singles that you need to make, you know, one of those monumental eras. So it may miss the mark a little bit, but I'm telling you, the album's still worth a listen. I've had it on for a week and it's absolutely not as bad as the headlines would suggest. So I'm curious today, why all the Katie hate? She can't do anything at all without daggers being plunged into her back. She's just performed here in Australia. It was a great performance. I don't read reviews till I've watched a performance. Fantastic. Inevitably went online. It's been trashed. Now, look, I've been critical of Katy Perry myself. Some of you will be shaking your head, going, you're the worst, Tim. You've done it yourself. Because I did think Woman's World sent a toxic message to young people. And it certainly hasn't helped that she collaborated with Dr. Luke, who was in 2014 accused of drugging and sexually assaulting fellow pop star Keisha. Let me make it really clear, though. He was never charged. He did reach a settlement with Keisha in 2023 in a civil suit where she claimed emotional and sexual abuse and he claimed defamation. So there were claims going in both directions. But at the moment, there is a palpable dislike for Katie. And it just doesn't seem proportionate to me. And I am absolutely fascinated. Why is this the case? You scratch a little, though, as I've done, and you find Katy Perry is a pop star who is far from perfect. She's made many mistakes, including fighting with nuns. I'll just say that again fighting mm -hmm. nuns, one of whom dropped dead, and the nunnery blames Katie for that, if you can believe it. True story, so stay tuned. Uh -huh. So is all the Katie hate justified? Madam Roast Beef is with me to talk it all through. G'day, Madam Roast Beef. How are we doing? And can I just say first, I absolutely used to identify as an air quote, Katie cat. That's 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 the worst part of used it all. Used to, used to. Yeah. Used to, and and the reason I say I say it in the past tense is because I I can't stomach this this current era. I'm not going to say that I don't like it. I have the album signed on vinyl, of course. I I love Katy Perry. I'm a huge Katy Perry fanatic. Growing up, the firework music video for me was like as as a gay boy in a small town of less than a thousand people. Seeing that gay kiss in the music video, I was like, oh my god, I'm not abnormal. I'm actually like it's okay. But what I cannot stomach and what I cannot get stand by is working with an abuser. Oh my god! And then working with them, working with them on a fake feminist anthem. What well, is well, that? Well, 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 hold on. We can't call him an abuser. We can't call. I him will. That. I well, will. Can I can I say why? Can I say why I will call him an abuser? Well, let's just stick with some legal technicalities here. He's never been convicted of abuse, ne so you never can't call him an abuser. So he's never been convicted of being an abuser, but he did tweet out photos of Kesha sleeping, and after she made claims and made her claims public about him, you know, assaulting her, he decided to what? What did he decide to do? keep her on the record for three more albums and profit off of her but let's make it clear though you can hold the opinion that he's an abuser but you can't say he is it's illegal to say that it's against the law well, it's defamation well, you he, can't say it he, he he may he may not be he may not be uh a convicted sexual abuser but i definitely i definitely would say it's safe to say he's an emotional abuser for sure emotional terrorism Let's put this in context. She's collaborated with him from the beginning. He could but, but, be. But do, do you know why it's sick that she that she waited until the Kesha lawsuit was settled because she didn't want negative public feedback? Well, that didn't work, did it? Absolutely fucking not, and it should not have. But how sick is that? She she, she thought, oh, I'll just wait. I'll just wait to work with Doctor Puke until the Kesha thing is done, and then I can go back to having number one hits. It's like, girl, go fuck yourself. Let's hear what Katie had to say when she was asked about working with Dr. Luke. 
I do want to ask you about one collaborator in particular. I know a lot of people have expressed disappointment and were really upset that you decided to involve Dr. Luke on this album. Why did you choose to work with him? Look, I I understand that it started a lot of conversations and he was one of many collaborators that I collaborated with. But the reality is it comes from me. The truth is I wrote these songs from my experience of my whole life going through this metamorphosis. And he was one of the people to help facilitate all that one of the writers, one of the producers. And I am speaking from my own experience. Like when I speak from, when I speak about woman's world, I speak about feeling so empowered now as a mother, as a woman. It's an interesting defense. I've got to say, Madam Rose Beef, basically I worked with him, but it was sort of like, they're my words. So what's the problem? She doesn't actually Uh, address the problem head on. And the sickest part is that he's credited as a writer on the lyrics, your words. Really? He's right. He's credited as a lyricist. My view is that regardless of, innocence or not because i refuse to step into that domain none of us know what's gone on it's all been put before a court kesha did give quite a detailed deposition but at the end of the day they settled so we can't actually we can have an opinion but we can't reach a conclusion but in the world of publicity if i was katie's manager i would have said you're mad don't go near them he's tarnished yeah crazy Crazy, crazy, crazy. And, and, and let's be honest, the singles were not were not very good. Well, like, it's been absolutely savaged online. Let's listen to some uh, reviews. These aren't from social media people. These are from music critics, in inverted oh, commas. This is from Variety magazine. The album is flat, coasting on cascades of lyrical cliches and musical ideas that rarely crest. Across many of its 11 songs, Perry sounds disaffected and removed, as if she'd just punched it out between American Idol tapings. <laughs> bit brutal bit brutal That's hilarious the lead single on the album right like I, I i fully respect your opinion that we can't air quotes call dr luke an abuser but but i uh a a known possible abuser um why would you choose to work with a known possible abuser on a song about like a feminist anthem that's the <laughs> dumbest thing anyone could ever possibly do they, like like th- th- that's literally like asking the nra to sponsor like an anti-gun advocate like school shooting like rally like that would make no sense misinformed i'd love to know if her advisors were telling you to back away from the cookie jar look this criticism madam roast beef of katie it goes back a long way she was accused of trivializing gay sexuality with her song i kissed a girl which apparently has homophobic undertones. What do you think of that? Okay. Can I be honest? Probably, absolutely. In the early 2000s, are you kidding? Nobody wanted the word gay to be seen as a good thing. Absolutely. The only person that saw like gay as a good thing, in my opinion, in, in, in like pop culture would be like, I don't know, think about Madonna, Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera, that make out. Like, 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 like for example, Katy Perry's song, You're So Gay. Have you heard that song? Yes. You're so gay and you don't even like boys. Like, like she's also a gr- a grew up in a small town Bible thumper. I, I don't think Katy Perry's homophobic at the same time. I, but at I, the same time, she has sung homophobic lyrics. Let's be, I'm so gay has lyrics in there about um, stereotyping gay fashion sense, something about a oh, scarf or a yeah. beanie. I can't remember what it was. But, and and listen to this, Madam Ro- Rosebeat. The, 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 in I Kissed a Girl, she's implying that the speaker or the singer doesn't actually like women, but she's just kissing girls for fun. It really does to, invalidate and, and, queer and women. And let's be honest, absolutely. But let's be honest, it's not even just for fun. It's to make men horny, which uh-huh. which so many straight girls do. They're like, yeah, I'll lick your labia if it makes if it makes Jonathan really horny for my pussy hole. So many girls do that, which can I be honest? Props to you, girl. If you want to start licking clit and get get some dick on the side, props to you. I don't care. But do you think she made her career on the back of uh, trivializing homosexuality with that song? I would. I, I would. I, I wouldn't say. I know. I, I wouldn't. I, I may, may, maybe that song, but 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 I, but I wouldn't say her whole career. No. Like 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 like. Even though I thought Katy Perry was a dumb bitch and a stupid whore for working with Doctor Puke, I would I, I would not want her canceled for that. What I would want is her held accountable. I want people to say, Katie, why would you work with a 
known supposed abuser on a song that's pretending to be a feminist anthem? Are we suffering from intellectual thoughts? Are you mentally deficient? Like, 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 like that's the conversation I want to happen. I, I, I wouldn't want someone to say the whole album is shit. Fucking burn her at the stake. Like, no, she's allowed to work with who she wants. At the same time, hold her accountable. And you say, and what I the totally fuck are you doing? agree on this accountability rather than cancellation. And exactly. look, she's held herself accountable in this clip. You'll hear her holding herself accountable. I've made several mistakes, even in like the this is how we do video about how I wore my hair and having a hard conversation with one of my empowered angels, Cleo, about what does it mean? Why why can't I wear my hair that way? Or what is the history behind wearing the hair that way? And she told me about the power in black women's hair mm. and how beautiful it is and the struggle. And I listened and I heard and I didn't know. and. I won't ever understand some of those things because of who I am. I will never understand, but I can educate myself, educate myself. And that's what I'm trying to do along the way. And even in, you know, my intention to like appreciate Japanese culture, I did it wrong with a performance. And I didn't know that I did it wrong until I heard people saying I did it wrong. Madam Roast Beef, she's trying to be accountable. She's trying to which share I, the lessons. Which I love, which I love, which I love, which I love, which I love. I, I, I will applaud her and say, I'm slapping my cooter to say, good ass job, girl. Hold yourself accountable because we all make mistakes. At the same time, I, I will say it loudly and proudly as a Kesha fanatic. She follows me on Twitter. I love her. Her mom follows me on Twitter. I think it is re impulsive to wait until it's not air quotes as much of a hot topic to work with a toxic music uh producer my take on this viciousness towards Katy perry at the moment is is that it's a it's the compounding of all the mistakes that she's made because i we heard One, of their apologizing She showed regret, but there's so many. And still to this day, she she makes blunder after blunder. Have you heard about the nun drama? Oh, my God, no. But but I would love to hear it. Please tell me it's hilarious. It was around 2015 where she was in the market for a new home. She laid out $14.5 million for this sprawling former convent, okay, in the hills somewhere in in the United States. Imagine the money. Imagine the power that... Now, it was all fairly straightforward. She struck a deal with the Catholic Archdiocese to, to buy the property. But the problem was the nuns who formerly inhabited the convent, they insisted that actually the property belonged to them and it wasn't the churches to sell. They went to court. Now, first of all, possibly mistake number one, Katie, you decided to go to court in the first place, but <laughs> maybe that wasn't so bright. She went in. She actually had a legal win. Uh, and the court said, yeah, you can actually proceed with trying to purchase this property. Things really got dramatic at this point. Amidst oh, the ongoing legal challenges, Sister Catherine Rose Holzman, who was fighting the sale alongside another sister, she spoke to the local media. This was her quote to the local media. Katie Perry, please stop. It's not doing anyone any good hurting so many people. Hours later, Madam Rose Beef, Oh, she God. collapsed and died in court during an appearance about the My case. My God, she is a curse. How does that even happen? <laughs> oh, do you know what was out at the time? Swish, what? swish, which has the line, another one in the casket. Oh, my God. And your Katie cats, who thought they were oh so clever, they put memes all over the place with this poor oh, sister. Of course they did. Another so one sick. in the casket. How sick is this? Can we talk about the Katie cats and how how they are fucking disgusting? Ooh. Putting memes of it. No, no, I have no issue saying it. Literally, Kesha's first single as an independent artist, her first single since she was contractually obligated to work with someone that she says abused her. The Katie cats are brutal. They literally will tweet tweet uh tweet like statistics of Kesha's first single as an independent artist and say flop sha and say all these other crazy fucking things. It's just like I, I I don't like I don't like fandoms when it becomes like an extreme like where you're hating another artist. You know what I mean? Like mm. like like I love Madonna, but I don't hate anyone else because I love Madonna. Well, to make memes around a, a dead nun is on behalf of Katy Perry. I'm surprised Katy Katy's never commented on it. But the the last surviving nun of this order oh, has God. said. 
quote, Katie has blood on her hands. So there you go. We're again, compounding all the problems. Now, have you heard about her time on American Idol, the mum shaming incident that wasn't oh, so God, long no. ago? Please tell me. Okay. If Katie lays on the table, I think I'm going to pass out. Three kids. <laughs> Honey, you've been laying on the table too much. You know. You know. <laughs> so how'd Sarah Beth really feel about Katie's dig? Taking to TikTok on March 8th, the California native says this. It's embarrassing to have that on TV, and it was hurtful. I think that women supporting and uplifting other women is so cool, and I think that mom shaming is super lame. This what one the really... fuck is mum shaming? What is mum shaming? Well, this is what gets me, Madam Rose Beef. I mean, shaming someone for being a mum, but I don't think Katie did that. Katie was for being making a, a, light, a lighthearted joke about the fact that the young looking contestant, who was 23, I think, had had three children. And she said, three? She said uh, Katie's comment was, You've been laying on the table too much. That's funny. It's Let, funny, just right? Laugh at it. Don't be as don't be obnoxious. If you're 23 years old and you flung out three kids, fucking like acknowledge the fact that oh my god, that's crazy. You are a you you you're a colonizer. You're a goddamn reproductive unit. That's funny. Laugh at it. D- d- don't be like oh my god, Katy Perry's just upset that she can't have 13 kids by age 40. Like go fuck yourself. It's hilarious that you're having an obnoxious amount of children. Do you think Katie deserves all this criticism at the end of the day, Madam Roast Beef? At the moment, she honestly can't do anything without being savaged. I wouldn't say all of it. And and, and, and like I said, as someone that really, really was so obsessed with, with, with Katie growing up, like I said, that firework music video, it makes me, it, it doesn't make me sad that she's getting ripped and torn to pieces. Of course, I don't want that for anyone. At the same time, it's like, Make intellectual fucking decisions, you dumbass. Yeah, I've got to say, like, I'm really torn about this too. I, 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 every time I see it interviewed, I think, you are delightful. You're a lovely person. She f- strikes me as someone who's quite lost, though. She's very out of touch. I spoke in the last podcast when she emptied her handbag and told all us common folk about her stupid cinnamon moisturizers and like, what is know, that? cardamom this and her vitamin that. It was so out of touch. But at the same time, there's, I don't think there's a malicious bone in her body. But I've got to say, Madam Rosebeef, now that I've scratched the surface, she brings a lot of it on herself. Oh, yes. Th- th- through absolute asinine stupidity. And I, I, I have no shame in saying that. It's, it's embarrassing. As, as someone that literally was obsessed with her. And, and to a degree, I still am obsessed with with. With the first, with the first three, four albums, love them so much. But after that, I was just like, I really don't give a fuck. Although at the same time, like I said, she has a song called Daisies. I have it signed on vinyl. It's one of my favorite things in the world. And she also has a daughter called Daisy. So yeah. like, I the, 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 there absolutely is a correlation there. And I, th- I think that's beautiful. But that song, Daisies, is my favorite Katy Perry song. It is so gorgeous. Yeah, look, she's she's done a lot of great stuff in the in the music sphere. But if the if the basic accusation, and it is because I've done my research now, is that she's entitled and selfish. Well, usually I'd be saying easy to throw that around people, but where's your evidence? Well, going into battle with nuns, seriously, yeah, that's crazy. I mean, what, what, the, uh, talk uh, about uh, entitled. What, she uh, also came from a religious background. She should know not to do that. What? Yeah. Well, it's not. She has the right to do it, but it just shows how out of touch she is. To out be of honest, touch that with you wouldn't reality. Drop it. Yeah, I mean, maybe legally she was in the right. Who knows? The, the case has fizzled out now. But and and all the other things that she, there's just a se- there is a little sense of entitlement there. But I think she's the first to say she's on a journey. Hopefully, she continues to learn. Hopefully, becoming a mother will. Although she became a mother and released Woman's World, which is outrageous to me. I don't know how which on is earth fucking unhinged. She did that. If she'd had a son, she never would have thought to release that. The demonization of boys. I don't know why it continues, but it does. Madam Rose. Under my skin. This world is a malignant turkey nightmare. It's a fucking nightmare. The, the people just don't they don't they don't use their 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 brain ever. That would have would it would have been a much better title, Malignant Turkey World. That's what it is. No, I exactly. Love it. That's exactly what it is. It's gross. If people want to see all of your reactions, where do they go? Madam Roast Beef on YouTube, ladies. I am there smiling with my tits exposed and a smirk. I promise you, (laughs) a wild-eyed smirk, I swear.
she went back to work with Dr. Luke, which is literally the most tone deaf and ironic thing you could possibly do when making a song about empowering women. Because if you don't know who Dr. Luke is, he is the same man who was sued by Kesha for various number of things, including essay and other stuff I'll let you read here. But all this, of course, inspired Kesha to write the amazing song Praying that really deeply touched a lot of us who've gone through similar things. And her entire album Rainbow, in which a lot of the songs are just talking about her being strong through all of this and coming forward and indirectly sharing her experience. And I'm not sorry to say that I stand with all the other fans that are upset. As someone who grew up as a huge, like, obsessed with Katy Perry growing up, she was on my wall next to Kesha, Paris Hilton, Miley Cyrus, and, you know, a few other posters of the women who who raised me. But Katy Perry was so desperate for another hit, she went back and realized that the last time she had a really good big hit album, and yes, the last Katy Perry album I actually owned was Prism. But I guess now she is so desperate and greedy for another hit single that she noticed that pattern and went back to work with Dr. Luke on this ironic, just disrespectful song in which her whole team is now panicking at how hard it tanked and what they can do to save the album. And honestly, Miss Girl, if he's on the rest of the album, the whole album is just scrapped at this point. Like, was Dr. Luke also in charge of the music video? Because it's just not it. The whole video just shows how out of touch with society and reality Katie has become because in 2024, we stand with victims.